Okay, welcome back to Friday Night Live. We got loads more for you tonight. And right now, a pleasure to welcome back a friend we missed last week. We don't have to miss her any longer because it's time to welcome Florence from Crawley. <laughs> Sorry about that. I've been watching that many quiz shows this week that my mind's gone completely blankety blank. Catchphrases, connections, you bet, Robin Day's question time. Though I don't know where he gets the contestants from on that show because they never seem to get the answers right. <laughs> now, the word quiz in the dictionary has three different meanings. Now, this is a true bit coming up, right? Number one, an oral examination. I'm sorry. I never said the word oral in front of so many people before. <laughs> Although there was a time when... <clears throat> <laughs> Number two, an odd-looking person. Suppose that's why Bruce Forsyth's on so many of them. And number three, a general knowledge test, like Mastermind. I applied for that show recently. My specialist subject is going to be the contents of my dressing table drawer from 1975 to the present day. <laughs> but so far I haven't heard anything from them. I was on a television show once though, and when I heard those famous words, come on down, I jumped out of my seat, waved my hands in the air, acting all stupid like he's supposed to. Woo, 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 running down the aisle. Unfortunately, I was on Songs of Praise. <laughs> Mind you, I think that programme would be a lot better if it was a quiz show. You know, could have the uh, Give Us a Pew, That's My Dog Collar, and the next hymn is number 357. Higher, higher! 340, lower, lower! And if anybody got the question wrong or run out of time, you could have a big cartoon angel come up in the corner of the screen and go, Meh! Like they do on Bullseye. <laughs> If you can't beat them, join them. So settle back and enjoy TV's latest quiz show, Go With The Flow. Go With The Flow, Go With The Flow, Go With The Flow, Go With The Flow. Hi, and welcome to this week's Go With The Flow. <laughs> Let's start off by saying a big hello to our contestant, Florence from Cradley. Hello, Flo. Hi there. Well, finger on the buzzer for the first question, Florence. Who am I? I was born... Henry VIII, correct! <laughs> and on to a visual clue. What is this? <laughs> is it a well-known soap opera? Yes! <laughs> now, Florence, make a word out of these letters. Countdown starts now. <laughs> Seven letters, Florence. Oh, brilliant. Let's see what your word is then, Florence. It's Bluffke. <laughs> Correct. Finally, Florence, you could be the proud owner of this beautiful piece of antique china. Woo! If the price is right, how much do you think this costs? <laughs> Nothing. Correct. <laughs> Which means, Florence, that you have won tonight's star prize. A rubbish bin! And thank you for being a contestant on Go With The Flow! Go With The Flow! Go With The Flow! Well, this has been Florence from Cradley speaking. You see, it was me all the time. Ta-ra! Josie Lawrence there, great to see her back, and of course with her character Florence from Cradley, not from Crawley, as I said, little correction proofs, as always, it is live right now, live in the studio, it's a pleasure to welcome yet another of our friends, the comedians from across the Atlantic, this time, Hearts from Canada, working out of Los Angeles, how could you be more cool, how could you be more funny, please welcome, big TV star, Howie Mandel! <laughs> Tonight, but I'm here. I over. Listen to this. Listen to this. All right. I 
overslept at the hotel. This is the truth. I overslept at the hotel, so I had to catch a cab, and I said to the cab driver, get me to the television station really fast, right? So around every corner, we were going, eh, 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 and by the time I got here, my throat was so sore. <laughs> this is, this is, look where my hips are, isn't that weird? Anyway, this is, this is my first time in Britain. I went to Piccadilly Circus today, and I bought Listen to what I bought, because we don't have it in America. I bought a watch. I bought one of those Swatch watches. And it's great, because we don't have this, but it clips onto my crotch. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? No, it's one of those Swatch crotch watches. <laughs> and the reason I like it is because at 6 o'clock, the big hand was on my dick. <laughs> I've, been, I've, been going, I've been going all over the place traveling and staying in different hotels because it's so much warmer than staying outside, right? <laughs> what? You people stay outside? So anyways, this is so weird. I saw this in one hotel, and if you see this, it'll screw you up too. They had a television in the bathroom. So I was in the bathroom watching television for like a half an hour. And then a commercial came on, so I went in the other room and pissed on the bed. <laughs> oh, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. I don't care if you do that. I really don't care if you do that. I used to care a lot, but I don't care anymore because I'm older now. I really don't care. I, really don't... What? What? I don't care. It's true. Like yesterday, Jimmy cracked corn. I don't care. <laughs> What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? I've asked you three bloody times. <laughs> Answer me. What the hell is your name? Isn't that weird? I'm not even talking into the microphone and you can hear me. I'm wearing, I'm wearing one of those rectal mics. <laughs> I guess the antenna's up just a little too far there. What is your name, sir? Andrew. Andrew, what do you do, Andrew? Uh, this and that. This and that. <laughs> is it tough keeping two jobs? <laughs> did you go into first? You were doing this, and then you figured, screw the competition, I'll be that too. <laughs> so if people need this, they call Andrew, but if they don't, they just need that, they call Andrew. <laughs> Andrew, do you ever go to 3D movies? Do you ever, do no, they have? I've not, not been to them. No. You haven't been one to a long time? You want, this is so neat, this is a neat effect. You have, you put on these, Andrew. This is really neat. Put these on. This will be great. You got them on? This is just a neat effect, some special effects. Look at this. Doesn't it look like it's coming right out here? Wait, it's not finished yet. Keep out of there. <laughs> it's so weird. I got it. My goldfish died. My goldfish died. No, that's not a joke. I gotta do jokes. All right, my goldfish. But I felt I wanted to share stuff with you people. He died of a bladder infection, and I feel like it's my fault because I, he was like urinating seven times a day, and I should have known so, uh -huh, something was wrong. <laughs> I should have known, right? Because I'd be watching TV and the bowl kept overflowing. <laughs> Pigeons have diarrhea. <laughs> Guess who this is? Guess who this is? It's me. It's Howie. <laughs> You're so stupid. This is not a great disguise. You didn't know. I just put this on. You people didn't even know. <laughs> That's so weird. I'm on a show called St. Elsewhere where I play a doctor. This is, I got to tell you about this. This is so, in America, because I play a doctor on television, people think I know something about medicine, but I don't know anything about medicine. That's the truth. Even my own doctor, when I go get a checkup, guys, Andrew, I'm sure this happens to you, you go to, you go to the doctor, you pull down your pants, doesn't he grab your nuts and say, cough? Does he? Nobody else does. But you feel like an idiot just there. <coughs> I'm thinking, where's the connection? I don't know what it's for. Ma'am, could you just feel if I have a cold coming on? <laughs> so, women, you got it tough, too. You go to the gynecologist, you got it tough at the gynecologist. I went there with my wife when we were having a child, and it's so weird because you lie there on your table with your legs up, naked, open, and the guy comes in and says, relax. <laughs> like you're going to doze off. <laughs> See, and you're nervous. 
nervous about being there. If I was a gynecologist, I wouldn't want you to be nervous, right? So I would try to entertain you, to try to relax you. I would learn magic and combine the two, like pull a bouquet out. <laughs> or a rabbit, right? A dead one. You're two months along. <laughs> or one of those never-ending handkerchiefs. <laughs> that would be so weird. I said I, had a, I went to the gynecologist because we had a child. I had a child and my wife and not, I right now are in the middle of potty training because we think it's important for us to set an example for our child. Because <laughs> we can't just go in the living room and say, no, you can't go there. You have to go in there. <laughs> but this is what it's like to be potty trained. My, my name is Bobby. <laughs> and, I am, and I am potty trained now. And every, and every time... My mommy puts me on the potty. I cry. Please don't laugh. Every every time my mommy puts me on the potty, I cry. And then my mommy comes in the room and she says, Bobby. And I say, What? And what would you say? And she says, How come every time I put you on the potty? You cry. And I told my mommy, it's my party, I don't cry if I want to. Thank you very much. Okay, Howie Mandel there, fantastic stuff. Really went down well with the studio. While we clear the stage for the next act on, I'm going to tell you the next act on hasn't done any UK TV for nearly three years. This is because they like to play live, like to sing live, like to play live. Which is why it's such a fantastic privilege that they've chosen to come and do that very thing with us. Because for the thousandth time, there's no point in us scaring ourselves to death and changing 10 pairs of trousers. Doing it live, everyone comes up and says, is it really live? Yes, it is really live and playing live right now. It is a great pleasure to be able to introduce Annie and Dave, the fabulous You're in May!
love my pretty little sister Annabel. Oh, no, my sweet. It's you I really love. You do know that Daddy isn't leaving me the house? Yes, my love. And that all the silver's going to Cousin Jessica? Yes. Yes, my love. In fact, Gillis, all I have is my astral. The Astra from Vauxhall. Once driven, forever smitten. bank account didn't bother me. Ah! <laughs> Some of my mates said people didn't take them seriously. I can't imagine why. But these guys knew I'd be big one day. They were smart. I must have impressed them with the way I looked. Open an account with Barclays. We can help with anything from car insurance to buying a stereo. Or you could even just use us as a bank. They begged me to open a bank account. And pretty soon I got the account number, the checkbook, and the plastic. It was easy. Mind you, some people might find it a bit of a problem. Chessington World of Adventures. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Friday Night Live. The fabulous stuff from your rhythmics later on in the program. You're going to hear them rock it with the big band. But right now, it's a pleasure to welcome an act that's very new to TV, but not new to writing brilliant, incisive, witty lines. I know you're going to dig this great comedian. Please welcome Hattie Hayridge! <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Pass it on. <laughs> it's exciting here tonight, being on live television and looking forward to Easter. <laughs> <laughs> that British summertime really confused me. I ended up putting my clock too far forward, fell off the mantelpiece and smashed on the floor. <laughs> In the winter when we had that hurricane, I was standing at a bus stop. And all of a sudden, this bus shelter blew straight past me. Then three all came round the corner, straight after each other. <laughs> I should explain. I once had a terrible experience with drugs. My head got totally screwed up. My hairdresser was a junkie. I was under the dryer, he was on the Starship Enterprise. <laughs> Cost me a fortune. I had to buy a moped so I could wear a crash helmet for six weeks. <laughs> I was an only child, still am. <laughs> I never played with anybody when I was little, not even myself. I was so lonely, I invented six imaginary brothers and sisters. Hated them. <laughs> My parents were married 20 years before they had me. They used to have a cocker spaniel. It took them a while to adjust. They used to try and peg my ears together when they fed me. <laughs> Happy days, though. 
crawling through the forest with a branch in my mouth. <laughs> I used to like playing kiss chase at primary school, you know, where the girls run and the boys chase after them and kiss them. I was a romantic. I never used to run. <laughs> it was like a wind tunnel as all the boys ran straight past. Well, it was because of my imaginary brothers. They told them I'd got the clap. <laughs> I've got a boyfriend now, though. Fingers, his name is. <laughs> he always tries to impress me. Every time he comes round, he's had his car re-sprayed and has got new number plates. <laughs> he took me to his country club in Romford. He's the only man there who can do a wheelie on the exercise bike. <laughs> he likes to keep fit, he likes to take me on long walks. On bank holidays, we drive to the Lake District, then I'll walk back. <laughs> I don't know. It's not just men I don't understand. There's Japanese. <laughs> I started to learn it. I think it's important to read great literature in its original language, like how to change the cartridge on my stereo. <laughs> I did a few evening classes. I did a voice class to make my voice stronger. The teacher told me to speak from my diaphragm. Well, I'd left mine at home, the little plastic plate. <laughs> I did have a coil, but I kept picking up minicab drivers. <laughs> I buy a lot of convenience food. I like reading the serving suggestions on the packets. <laughs> Why not serve with asparagus tips and a knob of butter? That's my favourite. or on boiling the bag beef curry. Why not flush it straight down the toilet? <laughs> I was watching the telly today, watching those people, those ones who can't tell stalk from butter or Ariel from brand X, or their ass from their elbow. <laughs> I did my own test at home. I could tell the difference. Pepsi seemed just like water. But Coca-Cola ruined all my clothes and the washing machine. <laughs> I don't know. People always phone you when you're doing something. Washing your hair, cooking your tea. Staring into space. <laughs> I get my own back. I get in the bath, get out, stand dripping in the hallway, then I ring round everyone I know. <laughs> I was watching the sumo wrestling the other night on the telly. I was watching it for 20 minutes before I realised it wasn't the darts. <laughs> I don't know. I think life's so fast nowadays, there's lots of things we just don't even notice. I don't know what they are, though. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. Pretty much everybody writes their own stuff on this show, and Hattie Hayridge sure can write. I reckon we're going to be seeing a lot more of her in the future. Right now, we're going to be seeing something that has really taken off over the last few weeks. Great big star of Radio 1. But he's our man. Please welcome Blow Somebody! Mail. <laughs> you see that Annie Lennox bird who was on before? She's all white, she is, isn't she? Oh, I'd help her out. She's all white. Pity she can't sing. <laughs> she wants to come down and football. That ain't proper singing. Come down and football one Saturday. We teach her how to sing proper. 
Ich kann so zu sein, Freunde! Ich kann so zu sein! 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 Ich I go down there, right? When I go down to football, right? I always sit behind the dugout where Al Tell sits, right? I lean over to him, I go, Oi, Al Tell, loads of money. <laughs> he goes to me, he goes, All right, loads, well, and he waves his wad at me, right? That's why Spurs always lose, because I'm flashing me wad at him, he's flashing his at me. We don't bother to watch the football, me and Al Tell. <laughs> We're just waving our wads at each other. Loads of money. No, I don't go to football so much now, actually. Because, you know, it's four quid on the terraces now, isn't it? It's not nearly enough! <laughs> I go down the opera now, don't I? You know, the opera! Lots of money, lots of money, lots of money! Bus, bus, drum! Bus, bus, drum, drum, bus, bus, drum, drum, bus, bus, drum, drum, dollop, dollop, bus! It's great, the opera, isn't it? <laughs> Me and the lads, right, from the football, we all dress up, right, in the old Black tie, white shirt, the old long dinner jacket, right? Little tail on it. We call it penguins, our mob, right? Go down Common Garden, right? Down the garden, go to the opera house, go, Oi, mate, how much your most expensive tickets? He says, 100 quid. I go, Ah, oh, cheap tonight, then we'll have no! <laughs> go in, right? Go out the bar before it starts to get pissed up. Drink all that champagne. I always drink champagne. Best drop a lot of money can buy champagne. <laughs> I oh, usually get the first round, I go, Oi, mate, I want ten pints of champagne and two pints of champagne top, all right? <laughs> Here, look. Blimey, there's Princess Di over there. Oi, mate, half a champagne and nine for the lady, all right? <laughs> yeah, all right, love. Yeah, I'll see you later. <laughs> anyway, go to the opera. When the opera starts, it's great opera, isn't it? I tell you, especially if old Placido Domingo's playing, Cos he's a bollocks, that geezer, isn't he? <laughs> I'll tell you, when he comes on, that is when the singing starts. Domingo! 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 We help him out, don't we? We help him out. He loves us doing that. When he gets to one of his R.E.R.s, we go, Cos he's Placido! Placido Domingo! He's my father, right? He's talent! The opera's ever seen. He loves it! He loves it! Sorry, that he loves it! Mind you, if that Pavarotti's playing, it's a different story, right? Different story, because we hate him, because he's fat! <laughs> if he comes on stage, we start singing Pavarotti, shut your mouth! <laughs> Right, if we don't go, we hit all the penguins, right, we get up on the stage, we do it! <laughs> Put it this way, right, uh, now I have all violence of all types, right, but he's back, so you've got to do him, ain't you? Do it! <laughs> we leave a little calling card on him, you've just been pop -up -up picked up by a penguin! Anyway, <laughs> anyway, right. the old Bill come down, don't they? The old Bill, they nick us, right? Clunk, click, in the neck. Next day, up in front of the beak, the beak goes, You have been found guilty of causing a ruck. You are fined 1,000 quid. I go, is that all? <laughs> Here, mate, here's 2,000 quid. Take your old lady on holiday. I've got loads of money! <laughs> no! Shut your mouth! No! All right. Friday Night Live's very own Harry and Phil. Brilliant stuff. They'll be back next week. Right now, it's a pleasure to welcome back the brilliant Roachfire! <laughs> They say Heineken refreshes the parts other beers cannot reach. Pity the scriptwriter of this next commercial didn't try a can. Oh, hello, Pet. Haven't you even started yet? Yeah, but Pet, it's, it's all preparation, isn't it? Well, if it's not done by the time I get back from Mother's, there'll be big trouble. Right. Yes, 
So you see, Heineken even refreshes the pets other beers cannot reach. Once a hooly hooly cutie Loved a hula boola hoop She preferred a hoopa loop Then to eat a hula hoop Hoopa loop a hula hoop Hoopa loop a hula hoop A walla bala boola hoop A walla bala boola hoop About a hungry bandicoot Said don't hula with your hoop You should eat it with one swoop Eat the hula a company that has always had its roots in finance and draws on 150 years experience is now launching four new unit trusts. Morgan Grenfell Unit Trusts. Ask your financial advisor or call 01200 0200. How can you be certain that the oil you give your engine is doing everything you expect of it? Protecting every moving part, ensuring maximum performance every time. Here's a way. Make sure the oil is liquid engineering. Castrol GTS. Fit it in your engine. clapping the adverts, but right now we're going to have some more fun entertainment. We're going to welcome back an old, old friend. He always scores a hit on this show, the Joan Collins Fan Club, but promoted tonight, Police Constable Fan Club. <laughs> Evening all. They said it could never be done. They said I'd never be a Bobby on the beat. But Kel Surprise, I'm wearing marigold gloves and I've got a truncheon in my pocket. <laughs> Need I say more? I am actually quite enjoying being a policeman. I've, oh, funny, take the weight off your slingbacks. <laughs> I've only been in the force a couple of weeks and already I'm president of the Shiny Helmet Club. Can't be bad, can it? Could I introduce you now to Fanny of the Yard? Formerly, <laughs> formerly Fanny the Wonder Dog, now a fully qualified police dog. She is in fact a sniffer dog. Well, she's got a bit of a cold. <laughs> I thank you. One whiff of a cheap aftershave and she'll pin you to the ground. So I'd stand downwind if I were you. <laughs> What's your name? Mark. Mark, where are you from, Mark? Harrow. Harrow? Right, well, you're under surveillance straight away. <laughs> no questions asked. It's not easy for me. It wasn't Mark, wasn't it? Just the one syllable, Mark. <laughs> it's not easy for me because it's a hard life being a policeman. It's not all flat feet and whistles, you know. The other morning, they wanted to send me off on a dawn raid. I said, I'm sorry, but you won't see me before half past ten in the morning. <laughs> I don't have my porridge till nine, and I'm not leaving the house without something hot inside me, not for anybody. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry about that one, but they don't call us the filth for nothing, you know. <laughs> ah, yes. Fortunately, I've got a very understanding boss. Fanny's doing an impression of him right now. <laughs> this will give you a bit of a clue. Who do you think it is, Mark? Any ideas from Harrow? It's James Anderton. <laughs> I, am in fact, I am, in fact, James Anderton's personal assistant. I've got the whip marks to prove it. I've certainly earned my stripes, and we get on rather well, James and I. In private, we've got pet names for each other. I call him Jimbo, and he calls me the spawn of Beelzebub, so um, <laughs> things have worked out quite well. Mark, you're acting suspiciously now. <laughs> Is that a tattoo on your hand? Yeah. You want to watch it, or you'll end up in the identity parade. <laughs> you know what that is? It's a bit like an Easter parade, but without the bonnets, so... <laughs> You might quite enjoy it. Now, I'm actually here tonight because the police want to improve their image. 
and we find that young people today, you don't respect us anymore, and some of you don't even like us. So there's going to be some changes. From now on, any young person arrested won't automatically be beaten up in the back of the van. No. From now on, you'll be given a cup of herbal tea <laughs> and a clutch finger. Interrogations will take place in the station sauna with the detective of your choice, and uh, <laughs> all High Court judges will answer to the name of Shirley. So, uh, so what's new? <laughs> but, how does this affect your average Bobby on your average beat? Well, take a look at me, and I'm in plain clothes. <laughs> If you catch my drift, I know you do, Mark. <laughs> there's plain and there's plain. <laughs> Now, one difference any eagle-eyed felon or ne'er-do-well will notice immediately is the new range of police truncheons. Constable Cherney here, wheel them on if you would. Constable Cherney, a raw recruit plucked from obscurity, Say something, Constable. Hello, sir. That'll be sufficient. What were you before I discovered you, Constable? I was a nobody, sir. He was a nobody, sir. Yes, I just wanted to make that point. <laughs> He wasn't. Look at his eyes, though. He's got very nice eyes for a policeman. Goat's eyes, I like to think. He'll make someone a lovely yogurt one day. <laughs> when he's a bit older, perhaps. Now, the first truncheon, here we have it. The softly, softly approach. <laughs> Much friendlier, don't you think, than your average truncheon, but still capable of giving you a nasty brush on the cheek. Um, secondly, what do you think this is for? This is ideal if there's ever a riot in the nursery, or indeed a sticky moment in the playground. Uh, thank you. And finally, <laughs> something festive for that carnival occasion. <laughs> thank you, Constable. Now, I'm getting a report. I'm getting a report through my speaking brooch here that um, someone in, in the building has offended all the laws of decency, and I'm afraid it's you, Mark. I'm going to have to arrest you. Would you mind coming up here? Are you going to come quietly? <laughs> come along, please. Now, do you fancy a sauna? I hear they've got a plunge pool at Vine Street. Come this way. I thank you. Come on, Penny. This way. There you go. The John Collins Fan Club there. Julian was a big boy, wasn't he? Yes, indeed. Mark as well. Big, wide fellow. So, ladies and gentlemen, finally I have to share with you something that has been on my mind ever since I had the experience. I saw the seeds of revolution. I saw a passive reactionary turned by social circumstance into a revolutionary. I'll tell you how it happened. It happened on a train. I'm going to share this with you. Because I travel on trains a lot. I'm always going, sometimes I go first class, sometimes I go second class. I said, you can't go second class anymore. No, you can go standard class, because British Rail have brought the whole nation closer together by abolishing second class and inventing standard class. Well, that makes it much more comfortable when you're on an overcrowded train jammed against the toilet wall by a wally with a Sony wall. Doesn't it? You're on standard class. They've rewritten the language. You didn't come second, Johnny. Stop crying, you never come second. You came standard. Underneath, standard. Deeper, deeper, into the pit. The pit, not my fridge, but the pit that is British Rail sensibilities, lies the super saver. Hell on earth is a super saver train, ladies and gentlemen. They are as full as Ian Botham's box, and believe me, that's very full. These trains are so crowded, if one bloke gets a stiffy, he knocks somebody out of a window, believe me. <laughs> so there I am, on the platform, wondering about the seat of revolution. And there's a bloke standing beside me, and uh, we'll call him the Daily Mail, because that's what he was reading. And he was a right vicious bloke, sort of cross between Genghis Khan and Norman Tebbit. And he's going, oh, the unions, the NHS, squatters, things like that, you know. But he only had a saver ticket, you see. And I had a stand And a ticket which I was going to pay an extra two quid so on the supplement I could sit in a first class carriage. So I waved my ticket under his nose, went, Loads of money, shut your face. <laughs> well, why not? I can nick his catchphrase for God's sake. He's a mate, isn't he? So I got on a train and I forgot the bloke for a while, you know, the, uh, the Daily Mail. There I was on a train, you start the frustration period, start the wind up, ladies and gentlemen. I was sat, I had a seat, I was lucky, next to the automatic door. They only have two ways. Either they are so insensitive that you could drive a tank towards them and they would not open, you blithely walk up with a tray full of lagers, bang, wallop, cans of McEwen's all over the punt and reading a Kung Fu magazine. But no, mine was different. I had the sensitive type of door. The type of door so sensitive I'm sitting there trying not to breathe out because every time I do it, it goes shum, bang. 
The woman next door to me is knitting, and every time she drops a stitch, jum bang, six carriages up the train, ladies and gentlemen. The driver scratches his ass, and the door's going jum bang, jum bang, jum bang, banging away like a cabinet minister working late with his secretary. No question at all. <laughs> why? Why do they put these things there to frustrate us, ladies and gentlemen? That light, that light in the toilet that comes on and says engaged. I mean, what's it for? It says engaged. I mean, they might as well announce it on the tano, it might not. Make it a bit more public. Well, everyone changing for the Northwest, change your crew, and by the way, Ben's gone to the toilet. All right. <laughs> I mean, we, at home, we whistle. We bang our legs against the door. We don't need a light show to show us there's someone in a toilet, you know? I mean, it doesn't relax you. You get in there, you turn the luck, you sat down for more than five seconds, you think there's a row of people going, mm, he's been in a long time, hasn't he? <laughs> that light's been shining for ages. It is there to wind you up. Everything in that toilet is there to wind you up. Like the jets. The, the, the jets of water to wash your hands that are pointed directly at your crutch. <laughs> so you push the foot button, voila, disaster. <laughs> you know you are either going to have to stand there for three hours while it evaporates, or walk up the corridor with everyone thinking, oh, he's wet himself, hasn't he? <laughs> he's got a bit of a drippy tip there, hasn't he? <laughs> what is it about? I mean, like, I don't know why they do it. They obviously do it, they were overcrowded, and then we're even more wound up. There's no point in that toilet paper. There is no point having toilet paper made out of hardboard. It serves no function. They might as well not have it there. I mean, it's pointless. Might as well use your shirt tail or something. I mean, it doesn't, it's useless. It doesn't so much absorb it as redistribute it. <laughs> Spreading it further and further around your body, trying to wind you up so you'll get back. And then, of course, the worst moment of all, ladies and gentlemen, and up the train, up the train, the Daily Mail is getting more and more annoyed like I am because I'm finally not enough. I finally managed to grip a scarf betwixt my head and the window so that I don't knock myself unconscious every time the train runs over a bit of bird poo and I'm just nodding off, just beginning to get to sleep and British Rail have discovered the tannoy and every member of staff is a star. I am nodding off. Click! Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You are on a train. Your train has wheels and a driver and runs along the rails. To your right, there is a bit of England. To your left, there is a bit of England. We apologize for any delays. They are caused by delays. Shut up! And so, you try desperately to get to sleep again. Try to knock yourself against the window, but then no. The other bloke have a little try. Click, brr, this is your steward, ladies and gentlemen. The buffet is opening for the sale of hot and cold snacks and drinks, including tea. Tea with milk. Tea with sugar. Tea with sugar, but without milk. Tea with milk and sugar. Tea without milk or sugar. A cheese sandwich, an egg sandwich. Oh, no, that was a cheese sandwich as well. Oh, we sold it now. Anyway, I'm buttering a scone. So in the end, it's so tempting. You think you might as well wander up to the buffet and find out what exactly is on display. So up you go to this collage of extra... I don't want to knock the traveller's fare. I mean, it's not bad. The sandwiches are very good these days. They've improved it with the triple deck sandwiches. But, but why do they always run out on Super Savers? So you are left only to select from this astonishing culinary delights selected by someone with no tongue, no taste buds, fed on an intravenous trip. No one, no one has ever, ever considered off a train eating a jumbo sausage roll. You're not going to do it. Oh, I feel peckish. I'll have a jumbo sausage roll. What do you want, darling? Chateaubriand? Uh, Coco Vat? No, I think I'll have a jumbo sausage roll. You wouldn't do it. There are things behind that buffet you would never consider touching off a train. Little bits of cake. Individually vacuum wrapped in polythene. Well, I must say, that looks flipping tasty. <laughs> Cups of Max Piss Coffee Substitute Bollocks siphoned from the, the very depths of Satan's bottom. What is this? <laughs> Things you buy, and then you can't carry them back to your seat. You cannot, because you've got they give you these little white trays that you can't fit in, and they won't hold anything. And, oh, my God, I can't travel it too. So I'm trying to walk up the corridor with it, and there's loads of people breastfeeding babies, and they've got their feet out, and I'm tripping over. And there's a bloke coming towards me, and I pass... Daily Mail, and he's getting more and more wound up because he's standing there and he's had to stand for the whole journey and there's four blokes with a ghetto blaster and on the other side there's 57 people desperately trying to get the courage to tell them to turn it off but they never will, ladies and gentlemen, they never will. And I'm trying to get... And there's a bloke coming towards me trying to get a baby to the bogs and there's no way to pass and they should have passing lanes in these things. They should have, like, on country roads you should be able to get one. Instead you have to shove your bum in some poor old granny's face and I'm trying to get... And he won't give any ground and I won't give any ground and I'm coming with my max packs and my lager and he's coming with his little kid and suddenly, BAM! Up it goes in the air, babies, Max Pax lager. But the Daily Mail, the little Nazi, he saved it all. He saved the day. He saved because the lots went over him, right? So I went up to my carriage, to my two-pound supplement, and I sat down in my two-pound supplement splendor, and I prepared to drink my Max Piss. And that is where, ladies and gentlemen, I saw the birth of revolution. Because in he comes, 
in comes the lad himself, in comes this man, this Daily Mail, and he says, right, I'm absolutely cheesed off with this, this is stupid, I've paid for a seat, why shouldn't I have a seat? I'm going to sit down, there's loads of seats here, why shouldn't I have a seat? And he sits down, I said, man, that's brilliant, look at that, you haven't paid for a seat, but you've taken it because you need it. What do you think about squatters and queues in the NHS? He says, that's different, that's like, this is a train, I said, it's not different, mate, I've paid, sod off back to third class. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to say we've had an incredibly privileged show tonight to have such a lot of good musicians on, and the top of the bill are coming back right now to play live for you some serious rock and roll. So would you please welcome the fabulous Yuri Max! Nothing but a toilet and a youth club. A constant boil on my bum. I want to be manager of this place. I think I can do it. The jewel in the Jaxia, South London, this place will be. Fuck! Nasser tells me you're ambitious. But you failed your exams twice. Your family, rich and powerful back home, has been let down by you. <laughs> a Sussalim's game. This is going to finance our whole future. We'll drink to Thatcher. The shattered hopes and broken dreams of those who lived through the riots in Birmingham in 1985 are related next on four in the film that received the BFI award for the best documentary of 1987, Hansworth Songs. A company that has always had its roots in finance and draws on 150 years' experience is now launching four new unit trusts. Morgan Grenfell Unit Trusts. Ask your financial advisor or call 01200 0200. You know, back home we'd have to make our own entertainment. Long evenings, standing round the piano, wishing someone could play it. Still, we'd always end up running through some old favourites. Mm, music to the taste buds. Know any Rolf Harris, mate? No, sorry, Gar. Looks like we're in for a good evening, then. Foster's, the amber nectar. Diet lilt, when you're feeling good, tastes like it should. Diet lilt, with a totally tropical taste. The new Pentax Zoom 70 is the world's first fully automatic compact camera with a built-in power zoom lens. All you have to do is to move your thumb. Auto focus, auto wind on, auto everything. The new Pentax Zoom 70, no wonder it's been voted camera of the year. I want the report here first thing. It's in my filing cabinet. Right, hang on Mr. Thompson. Which one, Mr... Hello? When you need something somewhere fast, call Data Post. We'll deliver documents, heavy items and consignments anywhere in the UK, guaranteed. And to all major business centres by 10 a.m. Ah, that'll be my report. When you're depending on it, Data Post it. Martini extra dry. Have it with or without. With friends. With pleasure. Martini extra dry. It's there to be discovered. Now on for a powerful film essay reflecting the pain and discord that resulted in disorder on the streets of Birmingham in 1985. Hansworth Songs. <laughs> 